cooking's done, now we've got to wait for the judges to critique our dishes and hopefully they're all successful. It's a dream menu and you want it to reflect well upon you and get it right. Andre, tell us what you've cooked. For entree, I've done a Tuscan walnut gnocchi with pecorino cheese and a light milk sauce. For main, I did a comfy of rainbow trout with a caponata. And for dessert, I did a semifreddo. Shall we taste the starter? Yep. The gnocchis themselves are lovely, and you can tell they're homemade, and it's a great job. I like the idea of a milk sauce. Honestly, I've never really seen it before, so I'm, I'm excited by it. That gnocchi with that walnut flavour is fantastic, and it deserves a better home than something that's a hangover from an era where people over-garnish plates. Where did you get the time machine to whiz back to 1989 and find yourself a cheese basket? Because I have not seen one of those for 20 years. All I can say to that is, I had it in Tuscany two years ago, loved it, could be seen as kitsch, but I still stand by my decision. I love the flavours, I think really, really nice. The trout's cooked perfectly and the caponata's really, really tasty. The ice cream's got a lovely texture, really nice. The way you made it with the, the sabion is, is really beautiful. It's beautiful. I love the glass. It's spectacular. It's quite Italian as well. It's, it is, eh? Forget the crap about, you know, stereotyping, all right? All right? The Italians know how to make things look great. Andre, we've tasted three dishes from you. Now tell us, how are they representative of your vision? I'm a bit of an enigma with my cooking. So I don't have one dish that actually represents me completely. So that main dish, Andres, is that on the menu at your restaurant? Elements of those are on the menu. Gnocchi, yeah, um, I love gnocchi, chestnut gnocchi, spinach ricotta gnocchi. I could go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> oh, because uh, gnocchi, I'm thinking about gnocchi. I can, that's all I think of, really, that's what's funny. I was thinking about setting up a gnocchi van instead of a pie cart years ago. Where have you been for the rest of the competition? And suddenly you're laughing, you're talking with, with a kind of interest about food. Where have you been? Just been quite quiet. I've reserved my passion and I've decided not to extend it to others. Andre, you're the fence sitter. I'm not here for the cameras and I'm not here for the hoorah television. I'm here to, to, for my career in food and as a chef. It's about me and my career and going forward. Nice to hear, Andre. This tasting's gonna be more personal for all four of us, especially for me, I think. So I'm actually putting in front of them three dishes to represent me where I'm going and what I want to serve in my beer mason restaurant, and that's a big deal. If they shoot it down in flames, it'll be heart-wrenching. Chris, tell me about your three-course meal. Entree is a stuffed duck neck sausage with a parsley salad. Main is half a roast pig's head, and dessert is biramazoo. A biramazoo. Biramazoo. <laughs> now, tell me how this fits into this image a little beer bar European feel. I like the idea of unusual, rich kind of food, stuff that really goes well with European style beers. And I do believe in the whole nose to tail approach. I do like to use all the bits of the animal. Hence, you know, using the duck neck as a casing, using the pig's head. I mean, the cheek is just such a beautiful succulent piece of meat that's very underutilized. Your vision's very strong. It all comes down to the taste. So Georgie, please, the duck sausage. Oh, 
that duck neck sausage is delicious. So if I came to your beer bar and had that, I'd be ringing my friends that evening and going, come on down, you've got to come here. That's fantastic, Chris, well done. Well, Chris, to your main course of pig's head, you bought it, you serve it. Thinking, oh, no, this could go really pear-shaped, because it's not the easiest thing to serve. Ooh. When the knife cracked through the crackling and they heard the noise and they went, oh, you know, that was a good start. Can I tell you, that just smells absolutely beautiful. It's like, it's like this beautiful stock. Hallelujah. <laughs> that is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's you on a plate. In terms of a big urban beer hall, we are serving great Steins of Lager, and that comes to the table. You'll have whole tables of people throwing their arms up in the air and going hallelujah. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> it's a pretty amazing feeling, actually, to get validation from guys like that. It doesn't get any better. It's lovely and sweet. And then you get that little overtone of that chocolate beer at the back there. Um, brilliant. I could eat the whole glass. What can I say other than beer and mizzou? It could be a crisp classic to replace an Italian classic. Great. They love all three dishes, so I'm walking out of there with a big smile on my face, pretty happy. It's my turn to take my dishes to the judges, and look, I am nervous about what they're going to say to me today. Sam, remind us of your menu. Yes, uh, for entree, you have a pan-roasted duck salad with beetroot and a pomegranate dressing. Main course is lamb shanks with creamy mashed potato and gremolata, and the dessert is a salad pudding. George, should we taste? Yes. Matt, should we taste? The only thing I'd say is a bit of a confusion of seasons there. Yeah. Got all sorts of things on there. You've got asparagus, you've got beetroots, you know, you've got pomegranate. There's, there's a whole mix there. And when I look at the menu, it then goes on to a wintry lamb shank and then a, a summer pudding. That, that's the only thing I will say. dish it's it's a lamb shank it's something that you know you want to fight over the bone and sort of pick it up and start sucking on it well done It's not really a classic summer pudding, but it's good that you're moving it on. Well done. I need that. How does this fit in with Sam's thing? I think that this represents the journey that I am on with food. And it may not be a free-flowing menu yet, but I am trying to discover different flavours and the way things work on a plate. I don't think we're convinced that you ultimately want to make that jump between amateur chef and professional. Would, is that true? Um, no, that's not true at all. I, I definitely do, but I can't stand here in front of you, Gary, right now and say I'm ready to be the owner and runner of a, you know, head chef of a restaurant. That's not where I'm at yet. Normally, if you're sitting here, you're on the verge of watching someone go home, and the fantastic thing about tonight is that no one's going home. But one person is going to win a fantastic prize, the chance to sit down with Justin North at his restaurant, Bacass, alongside Katrina Canatani, who's probably one of the best pastry chefs in the Southern Hemisphere, and Sean Connolly from Astral, who is another amazing chef. Those three chefs are pretty amazing. I'd love to pick their brains. And I think it's the one prize out of everything so far that I would cherish the most. And if I could win this on the back of producing my food, it'd be even more special. 
Today really has been all about the vision you have, how your food, the food that comes from here, connects with that vision. Now, Sam, that was the weakness today. You haven't won the challenge today. These three other people sitting beside me here have a very clear vision of where they want to go with food. I can't help but feel slightly guilty that I don't. Julie, you're not alone in struggling to find the balance between restaurant cooking for the home or home cooking for the restaurant. Having said that, the pudding that you put up that was elegant, sophisticated, simple, and a real pudding is the sort of Julie that we love to see more of. I'm sorry to say, you haven't won today. I'm definitely going to go away and, and have a think about things a lot more deeply. If I can get the right balance, then I'll be OK. Andre, Chris, that leaves you two. You produced two of the best meals today by far. And one of you will win today's challenge. Andre, th this theme, this Italian theme, was reflected well in the meal that you prepared for us. The gnocchi was beautiful. It just was a little bit out of touch in that silly parmesan basket. Your main course was delicious. The caponata was fantastic. And I think the trout worked perfectly. And your semifreddo was popular on all three counts, so well done. I think what we'd like to see is you articulating where you want to go and what you want to do with this thing. If they want me to talk about my concepts, I can and I will in the future, but it's important that the first and foremost, I'm here to be a chef. Chris, and that pig's head, it was crisp, it was delicious, it was soft, it was yielding, and that cheek was absolutely fantastic. And together, your whole menu worked brilliantly well. I think your vision is clear for everybody to see. We can all visualise that beer bar, we can see that dark wooden furniture, we can see, or I can see, that line of beer taps stretching far off into the distance. There's little tapas items to that pig's head rolling out of the kitchen. Chris, you've won today's challenge. Congratulations. Well done, Chris. Well done, well done mate. Good, Good job. Stuff. This is why you won. You've got a concept, you're passionate about it, and you executed three beautiful dishes at flow. How's that feel, Chris? It's amazing. To, to get the opportunity to cook my own menu has been unreal. And to get the, the, you know, the approval of you guys, and yeah, it's incredible. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you.